In this video, we got the iPhone 11 taking on the newer iPhone 12. Is it worth the upgrade? I want to compare a number of things with these phones. Camera, the design, specs, speed, and of course overall experience. But before I get to these, which phone are you using right now and what's your favorite feature? Go ahead and comment down below. The design of these new phones is something that fanboys and haters alike are talking about a lot. The iPhone 12 is just a knockoff of the 4 and 5 series. And the iPhone 11? Well, that's just the same old design. Blah, blah, blah. What people really care about is function. Now between these two phones, there are some significant differences. So the new iPhone 12 is just a bit shorter, a little less wide here on the side, and just a tad bit thinner. Now since the iPhone 12 is squared off, it's tough to see, but with the iPhone 11's rounded edges, it certainly looks like the 12 is a little thicker, but I do have to say that the iPhone 11 does feel a little better when holding it compared to the sharper edges of the iPhone 12. But I'll be completely honest with you, it doesn't feel all that much different just because of the smaller spec size of this iPhone 12. Now, even though the iPhone 12 is just a little bit smaller, the screen displays are still 6.1 inch on both phones. Now, the reason why they're able to do that is because the bezels have gotten smaller on the iPhone 12. Now, unfortunately, because you have smaller bezels, that could potentially mean more false touches on the display with one-handed use. Now, Apple has done a good job with rejecting those accidental touches, but it still happens and it can be pretty annoying, especially if you don't have a case on. Now, specs isn't something that I like to talk about too much anymore. Let's be honest, from year to year, we really haven't seen that much of a change that would really warrant sitting down and saying, hey, these are the specs for this new device. Basically, it's just filler if you want a longer video. Now, for the purposes of this video, I do want to cover what has changed and throw my opinions in there. This is going to be good. The iPhone 12 has 5G, the 11 doesn't. Who cares? It's still not worth it. The iPhone 12 does have the upgraded A14 chip from the 11's A13. More on how that's working out in a minute. Now the iPhone 12 is compatible with that MagSafe charger. Meh, my MagSafe charger is sitting in the box over there and I haven't used it. Now some people actually probably do use it and it is something that's kind of cool, but that three foot cord is pointless. Now of course the 11 does have wireless charging as well, so you don't have to use the MagSafe charger. And the battery actually got smaller in the iPhone 12. However, I have gotten pretty good battery life out of the iPhone 12. Not massively better than the 11, but I can definitely see a little increase in performance. Nerd! Now the iPhone 12 does have an improved display. In fact, all the iPhone 12s have the exact same display. As far as how they look side by side, I mean, it is just a little bit brighter here on the iPhone 12, but like I've said in my last videos, if you take that away, there is certainly nothing wrong with the display. It looks absolutely awesome. Now, keep in mind, I do have these turned down a little bit for the video so you can actually see them. If I go ahead and turn these all the way up, of course, it might be a little weird for you on the screen here, and it could be a little bit brighter as say the camera has toned down a little bit. As far as my experience goes, I think they both look pretty darn good. And like I said, the iPhone 12 just looks a little bit brighter, but that could be the fact that I have them side by side and it's a newer display or less bezels. I mean, honestly, when you hold it up there by itself, again, it looks awesome. Now, camera wise, the photo specs are identical. The iPhone 12 has a couple new fancy terms for better photos. Video does the same thing. This is called HDR, high dynamic range. It's a popular term that basically allows for more detail in the photos and videos. The problem is if you don't have the display for it, the results really look no different. And in some cases, it's overexposed. Now between these two in good light, you can't tell the difference, which really bodes well for the iPhone 11. Now, if I didn't tell you which was which, I don't think you'd really be able to tell either. Now the color's about the same, the sky is exposed well in all these pictures, and the dynamic range is solid. Now even for the shots that aren't well lit, I didn't really see much of a difference either. 
I did take some specialty shots like macro and portrait, and it seems that these phones are almost identical. If there's a difference, it's extremely negligible. Now, when it comes to low light and night shots, it's more the same story. Both of these phones are almost identical, and I've really been impressed with what Apple has done with these cameras in the past few years. Am I a little bit bummed that it's not more of a difference for this year? Yeah, but let's be honest, that's not how marketing works, and they want you to buy the next year's phone if it gets a little better. Now, as far as the video functionality, I really didn't know what to expect with these since they did make some pretty big changes, so I didn't know how it would play out. Let's take a look. So now I am testing out the front facing cameras on the 11 and the 12. Honestly, I don't think we're gonna see much of a difference. Got sun behind us. Now I'll go ahead and put it in front of us. There's Mikey helping me out here. Hi, Mike. And uh, now of course we got the sun filling in. I mean, I can see the sky back there still staying a nice, a nice shade, keeping me exposed, but not blowing that out to get that a uh, bit of color, you know, to keep it bright where it's not too dark. But I mean, when you spin around and you got the sun behind you, I see the the 11 just going a little bit too much. Now, if I touch that and, and see, boom, right there, it comes right back. But again, testing out the video quality, the audio quality. I keep moving around. We got the stabilization on the both. And honestly, I, I don't know if I'm gonna see much of a difference. So now we're testing out the rear cameras on these bad boys. Now, this is 4K at 24 frames a second, and I am walking through some grass now, uneven, uneven ground, testing out the stabilization, the audio, walking through some leaves, you know, making some noise, and you got the color shooting around, going in towards the sun. Checking that out, see how that works out. How's the glare work? Going back oh, to a different angle, more in the shade here, a little less sun, how that works. Honestly, don't know if you're gonna see much of a difference on these cameras. They do such a good job. Now, keep in mind when you watch that footage, the iPhone 12 did look like it had that Michael Bay-esque uh, lens flare going on there. I think that was just the way it was positioned on the rig that I was using. But honestly, I thought they both looked absolutely good. Stabilization was solid. Audio was solid on the both of them. And honestly, I think they held up pretty well, especially on the rear facing camera and I really didn't see that much of a difference with the HDR. Now keep in mind, a lot of that is still in development, so it could improve over time. There are some videos out there of people trying to show it on YouTube, and it's really tough because YouTube doesn't support HDR. So you have to download it and watch it, and oh, that's too much work already. So the footage looks good. That's really all I gotta say about that. Now, what I'm really interested to see is how well the Pro line has improved from last year's model. I do have a video coming out on that soon, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss the video. So if you're basing your decision on how good the cameras are between these two, I would say go ahead and save your money and don't upgrade. If you're on an older phone and you can look for a deal on the iPhone 11 to save yourself a few bucks as well. Now, when it comes to the actual phone and how it performs, is something that people won't hesitate to complain about. Now, I could almost guess before I even tested these phones out what the results were going to be. However, I went ahead and did it anyway. Of course, I am not the first person to do this, and there are others that do it way better than what I was able to do, but I really wanted to test these two phones out with apps open, keep them open, which is faster, and by how much. Will this matter to you at the end of the day? Well, if the speed is that much different, then yes, it will. So, how did it do? Besides my sad attempt to tap the screen quickly, swipe up properly, and have the phones play nice during the tests, after about doing these 10 times each, the results, not surprisingly, were about the same each time. And the difference was about one or two seconds, which pretty much comes down to my stupid human error. Look, there just wasn't that much of a difference in performance when I tested these vices out in what I guess I would refer to as a perfect environment. What it comes down to at this point is how much storage you have available, 
what apps you use, and most often, some are way more taxing on the phone than others and certainly can affect battery life. Also, reboot your phone every once in a while, clear out your apps that are running in the background. These are things that you should be doing every once in a while anyway. At the end of the day, if you're using an iPhone 11 and we're debating to upgrade to the iPhone 12 because you think it will be better, I would go ahead and save your money till next year or potentially the year after that. Now, depending on how hard you use your phone, that's something that you have to do on your own. Check your battery health, check your storage. Maybe you need to clean some stuff out. Maybe look into iCloud backup to get some of those photos that you've been taking off of your phone. You would be surprised how much that helps. Actually, if you want me to share more tips on how to clean up your phone to kind of speed it up a little bit, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and you know the deal, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss that video. Now, look, if you have anything older, it depends on how happy you are with it. If you have, say, a 10s and you did the payment plan around this time two years ago, 18 months, I'm sure your phone provider is hitting you up saying, hey, it's time to upgrade. Look, if you're happy with the device and it's working well, then you might not see a huge difference either going to the 12. Things that you need to look at, again, are your battery health, how much storage you have, and when you initially got it, is the storage that you got enough now? These are the crucial things on how the device is working. I'm not saying the iPhone 12 is a good or bad device. I'm just trying to help people who may not want to drop another 800 to 1,000 bucks on a phone that really doesn't show that much of an improvement over the one that you have that is paid off. Now, if you wanna see me go over all the iPhone 12s, go ahead and click this video right here. Be sure to hit that subscribe button Turn on notification bells so you don't miss a thing. You guys have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.